Hey guys, it's your girl, T.R. McCoy. <laughs> I have to remember who I am. Um, today I'm eating a little bit of, um, can you see it? It's collard greens, um, some catfish, some macaroni and cheese, and um, I broke off a little piece of cornbread, which I'm not supposed to have, but let's say a prayer and talk a little bit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the food I'm about to receive for the nourishment of my body. Take out anything that might be harmful both now and later. Bless the food only as you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So today, I want to talk a little bit about, um, I seen a post that um, said, um, asking a question. The question was, why are so many people no longer going to church? And some of the answers that I got off of the off the off of the video was don't feel welcomed, church hurt, always asking for money, laziness, not being treated with dignity, no discipline, no discipleship. What did it say? Christianity not being what God taught. One said she'll never step foot in, back into a church. The church is only for helping the pastor, no one else. Um, someone said COVID. And someone said the enemy has stolen their joy. That's a lot of um, reasons as to why. This is catfish. That's a lot of reasons why uh, a lot of things that people um, have caused people to fall away from the church. And the sad thing is, you know, um, the Bible tells us that, you know, to forsake not the gathering of the saints, you know, because the day of the Antichrist is near. Matter of fact, it's already here because you hear about certain places where they're getting chips in their hands and the mark of the beast. And I know a lot of people don't believe it. These are collard greens. These are not, these are frozen. Um, a lot of people don't believe it. Um, but the time is definitely now. Um, you have, you know, um, so much going on in the church. You have secular music now in the church, and then they're dancing, gyrating, and saying it is praise dancing. All kinds of things are being allowed to happen nowadays in the church, and that's horrible. It's terrible. But, um, you know... And I feel like a lot of that comes from, you know, pastors not being held accountable, you know. The, elder, the elders in the church are there to hold the pastor accountable for things that, um, that he does, you know. And, um... It's terrible. It's terrible because when you don't say anything and you allow things to happen, it continues to keep happening. And that's not good, you know. Definitely not good. So, I have to figure out a way. God is going to call the church back together. Um, but... Man, people, you know, just like the Bible tells us that many, the very elect will be deceived when the Antichrist begin to do what he's going to do. One world order. We see that happening now. People think, as I said before, people think that, you know, going paperless and um, going moneyless is a good thing. 
but it's all a part of the one world order because if you don't have access to your money and something happens, what are you going to do? So, it's a lot going on. A lot. And, um, sweet potatoes. They're not sweet. It's a lot going on. Don't mind my husband in there making noise. It's just so much going on in the church and people don't know what to do no more. I know they're giving up hope. And um, it's sad. It's really sad. So this fish is really good. It's really, really sad. But I couldn't even say. You know? If the Bible tells us that the very elect will be deceived, what's going on right now tells it all for real. Because you see it happening right now. People are losing hope. They're losing faith. They're walking away from the church. They're turning against God. They're mocking God in the pulpit. Different things, you know. They're taking things out of the church, you know. It's just, it's a mess. It's really a mess. But unless things change, I can see the very elect and so many more being deceived. I don't know what to say. I know I'm eating like it's Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> eating like it's Thanksgiving. Just good. But yeah, so y'all stay prayerful because end times is definitely here. And as soon and very soon Jesus will return. People will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. People will disappear, two laying in a bed, and one will be gone, and the other one is you know, will still be there and it's a mess. But like I said, nobody believes it. But when it happens, that's when it's too late. And that's one of the things that me and my husband talk about when we're out on at evening prayer. We're talking about the things that are going to happen. And now is our opportunity. You know, when you hear people saying that they don't believe in God and they don't believe Oh, I believe in a higher power, but I don't believe it's God. Guess what? You sinning. You sinning. Ain't no higher power. It's God. Call him who he is. It's God. And you're calling it the universe. Oh, the universe is, is giving me this. And it ain't the universe giving you nothing. It's God. But people want to call everything something else, but they don't want to acknowledge God for who he is the creator, the sustainer of life, the one that gives life and the one that takes it, that calls us back home. And it's going to be, it's going to be a problem. So if people don't mind going to hell, so be it. You know, you can't, you can't make somebody change. You can't make somebody um, want to be, you know, you don't, you can't make somebody follow Christ if they don't want to. They don't want to believe. They want to believe everything that people are telling them, but they don't want to believe what God is showing them. And it's going to be too late. And it's going to be children, your children. It's going to be your siblings. It's going to be your, 
your parents. It's going to be people going to hell that did not have to go. And it's, oh, well, um, how could a loving God send people to hell? No, you're sending you to hell. You're sending you. But if that's where you want to be, so be it. You know, I'm just praying for people, you know, that their lives and their hearts will change before it's too late. But it's looking really, really dim. <laughs> it's looking really bleak. And you know you got people that want to be on both sides of the fence. No, you can't. You're either hot or you're cold. It's no warm. It's no lukewarm. You're either living for Christ or you're living for Satan. And all that secular worldly stuff, he said, it's, it, no, no. But people don't want to, they want to be able to do what they want to do and still call themselves Christians. You can call yourself whatever you want. But when that day comes, when Jesus comes and he cracks the sky and he takes his people with him, so be it. It's going to be a whole lot of people left behind. I just pray that I get it right. I'm worrying about me now. I used to, you know, worry about my kids and all of that. They old enough. They know better, you know, but they have to make their own choices. I can't make them pick who they want to be with, who they want to go with, who they want to believe in or none of that. That. They have to stand before God for themselves, just like I have to stand for myself. And so it is what it is, you know. You just pray for your loved ones and hope that their lives will change and they'll get it right before Jesus returns. But his, his return is so close because of what the Bible tells us and the days that we're living in and the things that we're seeing now in these days. So. Stay focused, y'all. Stay blessed. And I'm going to finish eating my food, okay? Love y'all. And remember, when negativity comes knocking at your door, what do you do? Send it back where it came from. It doesn't belong to you. Only good vibes over here. Praying for you. Peace.